If you watched my last video, you know how transformations work now. So in this video, let's work through some example problems that are similar to the kinds of things I'm going to be asking you to do in the homework from this section. So hopefully this will clarify exactly what those homework problems are asking you to do and how to do it. What would be a function whose graph looks like the graph of y equals the cube root of x, which is what we're looking at here, only shifted five units to the right? So what's a formula or an equation whose graph looks like this, only everything's been shifted right five spaces? Remember, if we want everything to be shifted to the right a certain number of spaces, we have to take the formula for the function and replace x with x minus that number. So the answer to question A would be y equals the cube root of not x this time, but x minus 5. Notice that minus 5 is included as what's under the radical sign. So the graph looks like this. Okay, B, what would be the function whose graph looks like y equals the cube root of x only shifted six units down? To shift the graph down, we need to subtract that number from the end. So that means it's y equals the cube root of x minus six. Notice the minus six is not under the radical sign. First you take the cube root of x, then you subtract 6 from that. What would be the function whose graph looks like y equals the cube root of x, only vertically stretched by a factor of 3? So we get that by multiplying by 3. y equals 3 times the cube root of x. And what would be the a function whose graph looks like y equals the cube root of x only reflected across the x-axis? That would be y equals negative cube root of x. The points that used to be up above the x-axis with positive y-coordinates are now down below the x-axis with negative y-coordinates, and vice versa. Next example. Use the graph of f of x equals x squared to write an equation for each function whose graph is shown. So when we look at this graph, it looks a lot like x squared, same shape, but it's not in exactly the same, same position. So compared to just plain old x squared, what's been done to this? Answer, it's been shifted down one. So if we want to get something that looks like this, we got to start with x squared, and shift it down one unit, which means the equation would be y equals x squared minus 1. For this one, compared to just x squared, for one thing, it's sort of upside down. So if we started with the graph of x squared, we'd have to reflect it across the x-axis then the vertex of the parabola would still be 0, 0, but it would open downward from there. Then from there, we would need to shift it left 1 and up 1. So to reflect across the x-axis, shift left 1 and shift up 1, the equation would be y equals negative x plus 1 squared plus 1. We made it negative. Then we shifted left 1 by replacing x with x plus 1. What used to be happening to x is now happening to x plus 1. It's getting squared. And then to shift up 1, we added plus 1 to the end. Now, in all of these, you can check your work if you have a graphing calculator or a graphing utility like the Desmos app. Just ask it to draw the graph of this function and see if it really does look like this. So let's try this. Hey, graphing calculator, draw me a graph of y equals negative parenthesis x plus 1 close parenthesis squared plus 1. 
Before I ask it to draw the graph, let me check my window. Yeah, it's going from negative 10 to 10 in both the X and the Y direction. So it's going to be zoomed out compared to this, but we can still see what's going on. There it is. Looks like this. If we wanted to look more like this, we could just take the part of the graph where the X's and Y's go from negative 4 to 4. And yeah, that looks right. How about this next example? Use the graph of f of x equals the square root of x to write an equation for each function whose graph is shown. So remember what that looks like. That was one of our basic parent functions. It looks like basically the top half of a parabola that opens to the right. And the pointy part here, if it's just the square root of x, that happens at the point 0, 0. Square root of 0 is 0. So when x is 0, y is 0. So this first graph looks like that, only it's been shifted how? How many spaces in which directions? Well, it looks to me like to get from here to here, we'd have to go left 1 and down 7. So to shift left 1, replace x with x plus 1. And to shift down 7, subtract 7 from the end. So y equals the square root of x plus 1 minus 7. Just for fun, let's check that on the graphing calculator. I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to reset my window, so I'm going to zoom standard. So now it's back to being negative 10 to 10. And now I'm going to clear this out. And here what we're looking at is y equals the square root of x plus 1 minus 7. So graph that graphing calculator. Yeah, that's pretty much what we were looking at here. What about this one? Well, compared to just the square root of x, this looks like it's been flipped upside down. It's like the bottom half of a parabola. So if you started with the square root of x and reflected it across the x-axis so that the points go down instead of up, that would be negative square root of x. For that, the the starting pointy part would still be at 0, 0. But we need to shift it so that it ends up not at 0, 0, but here. That means we have to shift 1, 2, 3 spaces to the right, and 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces down. So reflect across the x-axis, shift right 3, and shift down 4. What does the equation look like? y equals negative square root of x minus 3 minus 4. We made it negative. We replaced x with x minus 3 to shift it right 3 spaces. And then we subtracted 4 to shift it down 4 spaces. And last example. You'll be doing one or two like this on the homework. The directions might be a little confusing if you're not sure what they're talking about. So let's work through this to see how this works. So they give you a function. In this example, the function they give us is g of x equals the square root of x plus 4 plus 8. And they ask us to do four things. First thing they ask us to do is to identify the parent function. So that means out of those basic parent functions that we looked at in the last section, which one is this a variation on? Which one can we take as our starting point and then do something to it to get this? Answer, that would be the square root function. f of x equals the square root of x. So that's the parent function. And we know the graph of just square root of x looks like this. B, describe the sequence of transformations from f, which is just the square root of x, 
to g, which is the square root of x plus 4 plus 8. What kind of shifting or stretching or reflecting do we do to get from f to g? Well, answer, we shift four spaces to the left, and we shift eight spaces up. And there's nothing going on here that would make us do any stretching or reflecting or anything like that. We just shift left four, up eight. Now to, sh to sketch the graph of G, we'll do what we just said to do. We'll take the graph of F here, and we'll shift everything left four, and up 8. So it's going to still look like this, but instead of starting from 0, 0, and then sort of going up from there, we shift 4 to the left, up 8. It's going to start here at negative 4, 8, and go up from there. So there's the graph. And now the last thing it asks us to do is use function notation to write g in terms of f. So g is like if you started with f, but replaced x with x plus 4, and then you added 8 to the end of that. So g, in terms of f, would be that g of x is equal to f of x plus 4 plus 8. So that's how those kinds of problems work. That's what they're asking us for there.